Hey guys, I just wanted to put an update video out there today just to kind of share with you what's been going on the last few weeks if you didn't already know and just update you on all that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, first off I want to thank everybody for their love and support about Mini. It has really meant so much to me the last few weeks and has really helped me get through some crappy few weeks. Um, which is why for the most part I have not been on this channel and I really am sorry for not having videos up the last few weeks. Before I lost Minnie, I was getting really kind of crazy with life in school. My mom had to have surgery. So anytime that I wasn't working on schoolwork or work, I was helping her around the house since it was hand surgery and all that stuff. And then after losing Minnie, honestly, I just haven't been really in the mood to work on editing videos. I'm sure you guys would understand that. I'm just not ready to yet, you know. Making her tribute video was just hard enough. I'm just not in the point where I really want to be editing footage of her. It's just a reminder of... The videos that I've already started with her that you know I have footage of or some video ideals that I wanted to put together with her and just all that stuff has just been really hard the last few weeks and all that but I will be back I'm not quitting YouTube or anything I'm just taking a few weeks break and stuff like that. I think her death just really caught me off guard of course nobody is expecting their hamster die it's not like you get up in the morning and you're like oh you know I think my hamster might pass along today unless they're sick or something but it just really kind of threw me for a loop. I was not expecting it at all. She was perfectly fine a few hours before. It seemed like I had came in my room and I was in a hurry to go do something and she was out and I reached in and she crawled up in my hand and I pet her and kind of gave her a little bit of attention and I said, okay, you know, I'll be back in a little bit before I go to bed and I'll give you guys treats and love like I do every night. And when I came back in that night to go to bed, she was already gone. And of course, you just feel really guilty, like I, you know, if, not like I had obviously had any way of knowing, but if I'd known, obviously, whatever it was would not have been important enough that I couldn't have stayed and played with her, and it was just really hard, um, you know, obviously. So I've just been really lost the last few weeks, and just needing some time for myself and all of that. I've been keeping my uh, myself pretty busy with work and school anyway, so there really hasn't been time to edit or film a video, but it's just giving me a little break that I kind of really needed. I've really felt so lucky to have a hamster like Minnie. She was so beautiful and so very unique. I mean, I don't think you'll ever have a hamster with a personality like she managed to. It really was just amazing to me. And like my whole family too, you know, are really, were shocked by the loss of her. But yeah, she just had one of those beautiful outward personalities that just really kind of drew you in. You know, I feel like for the, a lot of it, I missed just the sounds of her in her cage, you know. She was, I mean, the hamster, <laughs> Many, like, I swear, never slept. I mean, most hamsters sleep all day, can maybe come out once or twice, and then they're awake at night. Not many. She was pretty much awake at least half of the day and at least half of the night. And it was always just so funny to me that, you know, at pretty much any point in time you would come out, would come through my room, she would be out, or she would come out in a few minutes. A lot of you knew that Minnie was deaf, and that never seemed to bother her one bit. It was always just amazing to us how she would know we were in my room or out and about. She... You know, they say if you lose a sense, like another sense kind of takes over for it. And I always felt that way for her smell. Like Minnie had an insane sense of smell. You could come in my room and make not a single peep at all. I mean, it was no doubt she was deaf anyways, but you could make no peep and she would know that you were out and she would of course come out of wherever she was sleeping at or playing at to come, you know, <laughs> hey me, come play with me. We always used to make jokes. We would, um, a few months after having her, it was insane. Every time you would come through at night, she would somehow know you were there. Um, and so we started testing her just to see. And you could literally stand in front of her cage and the pitch black, like, you can see her only because of, like, moonlight or sunlight or sunlight. You could only see her because of, like, the moonlight or the street lights outside. And so without a doubt, she could not see you. You could barely see her. And she would be playing on her wheel. And as soon as you would step in front of her cage, she would instantly know you were there and like not making a sound at all so if for any reason she could have heard it was not that like she couldn't hear you because you know we tiptoed up and made no noise and she would instantly get off her wheel or whatever she was doing and run up to the front of her cage like her sense of smell was just absolutely amazing i think sometimes that's what made her so clumsy is she would use her sense of smell to kind of direct her so she would um would smell you in your room you know if i was on my bed cleaning um or doing homework or whatever she would know i was in my room and would just come along the front of the cage and that i missed the sounds of her just doing her little thing in her cage you know the way like she would run on her wheel and she had that little hop that she would do out the way she would drink out of her water bottle she would hit the little bell and they're so loud it was so funny so yeah, I just, I missed the little sounds of her. She would do these crazy things at night where most of the time when she'd get bored of her cage is when I would see it happening. 
but she would go through at night and just start digging up her whole entire cage. It would be like 4 a.m. and you would wake up to the sounds of her making this racket, like, and you would look over there and she's just literally digging up her whole entire cage. All the bedding, she's moving around, she's knocked houses over, like, redoing her cage, basically. She would move toys around, like, it was always so hilarious to see her just doing it. And then, like, when she's done, she looks around like, oh, oops. But yeah, it was just, I, don't know, I think after some point you got used to the ruckus. It was always at like 3 or 4 in the morning, I swear, every single time. And she would do it like probably at least once a month. And it was just always so funny to see her cage literally all like destructed. And, um, and then she would do this thing like she hated, like, we used to make jokes like if Minnie was out in the wild, she would never have survived because she will not like sleep hidden. Like she would always sleep like out in the open in plain sight. Doesn't even, she hated hideouts like... For the most part, she always just laid beside the hideouts. Like she would lay in occasion, like in her puzzle playground houses, or sometimes in her little houses. But for the most part, always outside of them, or in, right in the middle of the cage in plain sight. And I don't know if that was because she was deaf. Maybe she didn't like you know being covered up and not being able to sense things or being hidden. Yeah, like so the only thing she would hide in would be igloos, and maybe because they were really open. I don't. She loved her igloos, but hideouts no. And every once in a blue moon, she would get this urge to burrow. And she would work so hard on this burrow and then go in it. And it's not like uh, we're not disrupting her. We would always watch from afar. And she'll get herself all covered up in literally like 10 seconds. Not exaggerated. 10 seconds later, she'll come out of it and just sleep out in the open. Like, nope, didn't like that. And like in a few weeks, she'll see her doing it again. Like, oh, goes and makes a burrow and she doesn't like it. So that was, you know, Minnie just really had one of those insane personalities that I will deeply miss. I, um, you know, filming videos is really hard for me just because I, almost every single video I was either filming in front of her cage or I bring her out because, I don't know, I feel like she liked the camera and she wasn't much for photo shoots. I think she would, she would move quicker than a robo. She was always on the go. She hated coming out. She liked coming out of her cage, but she always wanted to explore more space than you gave her. So doing a photo shoot was always a chore within itself because she was always on the go. So. The only time I think I got a decent photo shoot of her is, um, I think it was for her Valentine's Day shoot. She was sleeping and I never wake the hamsters up for a photo shoot. You know, I always wait till they're awake and then I take them out. And for whatever reason, I was in a hurry that day. I think I had to go somewhere and I had all the rest of the hamsters done and she was sleeping. So I waited and waited and just, I was like, I, you know, it's like the one day I had a chance to get the shots I needed. So I went ahead and I woke her up and I never do that. And <laughs> she was so groggy and sleepy. And of course I woke her up gently, it's not like I just like, grabbed her out of her cage and took her out or anything like that. But um, I woke her up though and took her into the photo shoot and for like the first minute and a half she was so sleepy that I got awesome shots of her, it was kind of funny. And then she woke up and was like, oh I need to go explore. So yeah, I made jokes that like that's how I need to do photo shoots from now on, it's just to wake her up. But I never had the heart to because yeah, I always just feel like if they wake up on their own then they're they're like, okay I don't want to wake them up, I just seem to mean. But um... Yeah, she seemed to always love to be in front of the camera, and I think in a lot of ways she knew how much she was loved on the channel. <laughs> I think that kind of added, she knew. She knew she had a cute personality, and that everybody loved her. But, uh, all that being said, though, it's just, you know, probably in a few weeks I will feel up to wanting to edit a video, but right now it's just not where I really feel like. On a happier note, though, I know some of you had been asking if Stitch was okay, just given that we lost Belle and Minnie in a short period of time. Belle had passed away just because of elder age. She was almost two and just recently had started struggling with the age and we noticed all that so in a way we kind of knew it was coming this soon. And just put it in perspective for me, Stitch is probably a few weeks younger than Emma and Belle. My sister adopted them in the beginning of November and I adopted Stitch the end of November and he was a baby so he was probably like born probably in October or something like that. So he is almost two and it definitely put it in perspective losing Belle that, you know, I know that his time could be very soon and that's why Minnie was just not on my radar. It was just a shock for me. But Stitch is completely healthy so far and thriving. He does not show an ounce of being almost two years old. He still is up every night playing on his wheel and he is very active and seems to be thriving fine. So every day that he is healthy and fine, I am very blessed and very lucky and thankful for that. But yes, he is doing fine. I would bring him out and show you guys, but I don't think he would take that very well. Like, I feel like he's really been a whole lot more lovable the last few days. I think he kind of knows that I need that and stuff like that. But he likes to be, like, in my hand, but I'm always afraid if I take him out of his cage in my hand that he'll freak out. Like, he gets startled very easy. He's a robo. And I wouldn't want him to just dart out of my hands not thinking. 
So I always hold him in his cage. I don't take him out. And I know that's stressful for him anyways. Okay, for the other part of this video was an update that I had been meaning to do for a few weeks now before I lost many. I just hadn't had a chance to slow down. But for some of you that probably already know, I have a seasonal job in the fall and I work at a Halloween store and so that keeps me a little busy and I had been wanting to film this update video to share with you guys that I probably wouldn't be around for a few weeks anyways before losing many that I'd probably not be on that. So yeah, for the last few years I um, take the semester off and I work instead full time. And then last year I just kind of really had regretted that I wished I had done school and work at the same time just to not put off another semester. I am literally a year away from graduating and it just kind of really hit me this semester that if I would taken another one off, like every time I take a semester off, it's like I could have already been graduated. And so I really didn't want to put it off another semester. So I am working full time along with going to school full time this semester. So it is a little <laughs> crazy and I'm not you know, I'm one of those, I don't multitask that well. I multitask well, but I'm kind of one of those that likes to just focus on one thing, work, or school, or whatever. But just, I didn't want to put off graduating another semester and all of that anyway. So I am doing both. And I mean, it's not so horrible right now, but hours at work are going to pick up soon. So that's just kind of how it goes. But I'm doing them online, my classes online, just because um, my school it takes me about two hours to get to one way and so that's a lot for me to try to figure out work around my school schedule and then just kind of wasting at least four hours and travel a day is just not worth it for me so I do online and I honestly like it that way I feel like I can come home and do work I can do it at 3 a.m. if I want like it just makes it a whole less stressful for me so that is what I'm doing and I'm so very excited um, to say that for my seasonal job this year, I am an assistant manager and I'm very, very excited. I know I don't really talk about work a lot, but I feel I've worked very hard to get this position and it's been an exhausting few weeks. And so I'm officially now an assistant manager. So that means, of course, I am working a whole lot more and I have a whole lot more on my plate. But it is something that, as I said, that I've worked really hard for and I'm very proud to have had this position even though it's just a seasonal job. So that being said, I will, you know, already be very busy. I work from August to November. Obviously it's already September, so we're already halfway through, but um, I won't be around much because you know, between full-time school and full-time work, a really big full-time work job, and of course just keeping up around the house and stuff, I won't really have that much time to edit videos, which I always kind of does suck because I love Halloween and so, I really had had so many expectations of Halloween videos I wanted to get done last year that didn't get done and so I don't want to say that I'll get them done and I'm not this year with school and all of that. So if I'm not around the next few weeks anyways, I do apologize, I promise I'm here and I will try to be posting on Instagram and stuff and edit when I can. Um, just due to the fact that I'm taking kind of a little break from the hamster videos, if I get a chance I might um, edit videos for my second channel, maybe some vlogs and stuff like that. They're really easy to edit. I don't have to worry about them looking really nice. They're just vlogs. And so I might be working on some videos over there. And um, I do have the hamster organization video that I have desperately been trying to get up for months now before I lost mini. That was on my project that I kept getting busy. And I do have it filmed, but um, the intro when I filmed it obviously was several months ago and um, I was in front of Minnie's cage and I think I'd even joked about her sleeping in the front of the cage where you guys could see her. So I probably feel like I should uh, refilm that now just so it doesn't get confusing or anything like that. So I have to put that on my list to do and then re-edit that and, and finish editing that video. So that will be a lot so I don't know when that will be up but I am going to any chance I get work on videos somehow or another. So. But I promise either way come November I will be back on a hamster video a week schedule somehow, some way. So just let me I'll get through this. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably about it for now. If I, don't, I can't think of anything else I need to update you guys on. So yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I guess I will see you guys sometime, maybe soon I hope. But at least I'll be on social media one way or the other. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.